Hallelujah. How's everybody tonight? Blessed and highly flavored. This is the night the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. For I kill somebody. No. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, there's that place where God wants us to get to in that area of complete trust. Amen. Complete trust. So many times we get swayed. And some of the swaying caused delaying. <laughs> Everyone say swaying cause delaying because <laughs> when the enemy comes and sways us it causes a delay you know everything in the kingdom God blesses us but the enemy steals even what God tries to bless us with and then when the blessing comes if we don't give glory to the Lord for the blessing or that blessing becomes a stumbling block now it becomes a curse so there's a balance that we must maintain in everything that we do, no matter what it is. And we must maintain that balance and always keeping Christ first. 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 And only first. My wife and my children are not first. My king is. Anything else between my father, the king of glory, Jesus and the Holy Spirit, between me and them as an idol. And I guarantee you it always causes delay. Does everybody got it? It causes delay. Why? Because God is trying to what? Expose your enemy. And if you're not willing to get rid of your enemy, he allows your enemy to take from you. He allows your enemy to deceive you. So many times we're praying and asking, Oh, Lord, why? What? When? How? Why not? What's taking so long? And it's because he's exposing our enemy, but we're not getting rid of him. Has everybody got this? See, if you allow the thief to stay in your house, you will constantly lose things. He will constantly steal everything God is trying to give you. You pray, the Lord sends it, and the enemy steals it. Then you blame God. Why aren't you doing what you're supposed to do? Because he's saying, you haven't done what you're supposed to do. I've been exposing your enemy in your life for all of these years, and you're still blaming me for you're not getting into that place you should be. Have you ever considered that your enemy is your own tongue? How about your attitude? How about your motive? How about the area that you won't take responsibility and blame everybody else? How about offense? How about unforgiveness? How about bitterness? All of these areas, God is trying to expose our enemy, and we're not willing to get rid of them. Then we blame God. Oh, what's up? People fast and pray, and God really exposes their enemy, and they still don't do anything about it. Remember, he said, I didn't come to bring peace. I came to bring you a sword. For what? To cut the head off of your enemy. Is everybody okay? Praise God. It's time. Would you turn to 1 John chapter 5? Called the hypocrite, the Pharisee, the, sage, the religious dudes. He gave parables and everything. Those parables are parallels of the spirit realm and the natural realm. You know, I heard this gentleman on, on uh, TV who wrote a book about Jesus. But in the book, what did he say? He said, the Bible, he doesn't take literally. Well, he's a stumbling block. People who don't take the Bible to truth are deceived. That means they're still living in their belief system and not God's. Again, I want to tell you that this Bible is true. I never believed it, but I heard it from him. Directly from him. 
It was one of the first things he revealed to me. My Bible is true. My word is true. So if you're going to take this literally, you're going to have a literal life. If you're not taking this literally, you're going to have a messed up life. Because you won't know the promises of God. You'll go by everything you feel. People that rely on their feelings are the most dangerous people. They cannot live by truth. They live by feeling. They believe that their feeling is truth. How many of y'all know that when you're drunk, you feel good? Hello. But then there's a point where drunkenness doesn't feel good anymore. But in the beginning, you accepted the lie. When you went and you got out and got high, it began to feel good. But then that feeling good no more was more of a controlling and tormenting factor. See, so in this, this Bible is true. His word is true. If you don't believe this, then you're deceived. And you cannot remove your enemy until you begin to use the sword of the Spirit. Has everybody got it? The word says, truth will set you free. That means practicing truth will set you free. Well, if you don't know what the truth is, how are you going to be free? How many times are you going to allow the devil to come and steal, kill, and destroy in your life? 1 John chapter 5. Is everybody okay? What's God trying to do? Expose our enemy. Expose what? Our enemy. You know, so many people are bound by medication. So many people, they refuse to accept that the devil lives. They refuse to accept that they're being influenced by the powers of darkness. They think it's them. Well, it's just, just me. No, it's the demon in you. What do you think the spirit of unbelief is? It's a demon. Does everybody, does everybody get this? Remember, your influence is by either the presence of God or the presence of evil. So you may walk into a place that there's more evil than what you have. You're going to sense evil. Has everybody got it? So you're going to leave that place and think, well, I, I must be okay. No, but the evil's still in you. Let me tell you, I was counseling with an individual, and there was so much evil on that person and hatred, I found myself grinding my teeth. I was going, Ugh. I'm thinking, whoa, that presence of evil is radiating off of this person. Finally, I had to start binding and loosening what was going on in my office. As I was looking at him, my thoughts were binding and loosening him. Because I had to push back the powers of darkness that were trying to come all over me. It was like demons, monkeys jumping on my desk. And all of this. I was like, whoa. I mean, their presence was so strong. And when I, when I got done, I was drained. I mean, I was drained. I'm thinking, whoa. I was trying to come to the message tonight. I'm like, man, I'm still trying to recover from this council. It's like, wow. And so in this, you know, we've got we to constantly remember to look beyond what we see and look in the spirit realm. And if you're not one that's looking beyond what you see into the spirit realm, you're easily deceived. And we don't want to be deceived. Amen? In 1 John chapter 5 and verse 6, is everybody there? Let's speak this together. This is he who came by water and blood, Jesus Christ, not only by water, but by water and blood. And it is the spirit who bears witness because the spirit is truth the spirit is what truth who do you think wrote this the spirit did he use a man to write it in this realm yes the author of this book is the holy spirit without the holy spirit it is very difficult to understand it you cannot read this like you read a book in college or school or whatever this is different because this is food to those who have 
the Spirit. That's why Jesus said, you cannot live by bread alone, but every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Hello. Amen? It is the Spirit who is truth. Verse 7. For there are three that what? Bear witness in heaven. That is the unseen realm, isn't it? The Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit, and these three are one. Did you notice he didn't say Jesus? Because Jesus, at this time, wasn't manifested in this realm. Is everybody okay? He says, he called him the Word, didn't he? So the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit our threefold revelation. This is a threefold revelation. In verse 8. And there are three that bear witness on earth. That's the natural realm. The what? The spirit, the water, and the blood. And these three agree as one. Why? Because the word became what? Flesh. And called him Jesus. Not only as the son of God, but God himself. So what connects the spirit realm or the natural realm to the spirit realm? The Father, the Word, the Spirit. The Spirit, the what? The water and the blood. So what connects the natural realm to the spirit realm and the spirit realm to the natural realm is the Holy Spirit. So he's the one that brings revelation. But there is a threefold revelation that, that must be maintained in your life and mine. Is everybody okay? And it says... And if we receive the witness of men, the witness of God is greater. For if this is the witness of God, which he has testified of his son, he who believes in the son of God has a witness in himself. He who does not believe God has made him a liar because he has not believed in the testimony that God has given of his son. And this is the testimony that God has given us eternal life and this life is in his son. Life, eternal life is in the son. Why? Because God is the creator. So God himself came as the son because he was bringing life. Is everybody okay? It was a threefold revelation. The father, the word, and the spirit. Then the spirit, the water, and the blood. Go to Revelation chapter 1. Threefold revelation. It is revealing. To reveal something is revelation. In verse 8. Is everybody there? Let's speak it together. I am the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, says the Lord. Who is, who was, and who is to come, the Almighty. He's speaking here now. Who is meaning present. Who was meaning past. And who is to come meaning future. It's a threefold revelation. In other words, the word of God is also three-dimensional, what we call threefold. Threefold revelation of the Christ. The Bible is a revelation revealing Jesus the Christ, the Son of God, and God himself who came into the natural realm. That's the purpose of this. Threefold. Who is present, who was past, and who is to come future. It is a threefold revelation of Jesus the Christ. And John 14. In other words, if you're walking with him now in present, if you're walking him with now in present, and you are walking in the spirit, because we know that walking in the spirit, there is, you're walking in God's time, aren't you? By walking in God's time, 
which is known as reality or real time, there is no space and time between us. So Jesus, even when he spoke to the prophets, because they were walking in the spirit, he gave them things that prophesied of the things past so we could know them now. Things that had occurred already when they weren't even alive and didn't even know about it. And maybe some things that weren't even written about, they spoke and brought it into the present. See, God is always trying to bring things into the present for me and you. So when a threefold revelation comes to me and you in the present, there isn't anything that can prevent the opening of heaven in your life. Unless you fall out of position. Or you don't believe. Or you break covenant. Is everybody okay? And John 14, is everybody there? In verse 6. <laughs> Glory, I love this. See, that's why Jesus was never expressing religion. <laughs> he wasn't about religion. He used to rebuke the religious ones. The intellectuals who didn't even understand. They dressed up real fancy. They had all of these words. Big carnal wisdom words of the natural realm. But they had no power of the spirit and didn't know anything. Called them hypocrites. Because they'd say one thing and do another. In verse 6 it says what? And Jesus said to them, what? I am the what? Way. I am the truth. And I am the life. Threefold revelation. I am the way. I am the what? Truth. And I am the life. I am the way. Past. Truth. Present. Life future I am there's more to it than that and you'll get it in a second I am the way the truth and the life it is a threefold revelation of Jesus or God in Jesus one of the area of the threefold of what we're talking about is the area that there's a Jesus that comes to us? There's a Jesus in us. And there's a Jesus that manifests through us. That is the threefold revelation of Jesus Christ. Comes in through. It is a cycle that he uses on an everyday basis and in your life and my life. Revelation that comes. Revelation of in. And revelation through manifesting Christ and Galatians 1 Galatians chapter 1 In verse 6, would you read this with me? Galatians chapter 1 and verse 6. I marvel that you are turning away so soon from him who called you in the grace of Christ to a what? Different gospel. Now he's going to explain that it's the same gospel, but you have a different understanding to this. Which is what? Not another. In other words, it's the same gospel, but your interpretation of it is a different gospel. Is everybody all right? Which is not another, but there are some who trouble you and want to pervert the gospel of Christ. 
Now look at this. But if we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel to you than what we have preached to you, let him be what? A curse. Why does he say angel of heaven? Because the Bible says that Satan comes as an angel of light. Do you understand that? As we have said before, so now I say again, if anyone preaches any other gospel to you than what you have received, let him be what? Accursed. For do I now persuade men or God? Or do I seek to please men? For if I still pleased men, I would not be a bondservant of Christ. But I make known to you, brethren, that the gospel which I which was preached by me is not according to man. Look it. For I neither received it from man, nor was I taught it, but it came through what? The revelation of Jesus Christ. In other words, it came, didn't it? Does everybody got this? Comes to us. Comes to us. To us. In us. And through us. That is a threefold revelation. To us, in us, and what? Through us. Way, truth, and life. Is, was, and will come. Ephesians chapter 1. Ephesians chapter 1. In verse 13. Is everybody there? Ephesians 1, 13. Threefold revelation. Let's speak it together. It says what? In him you also trusted after you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also having believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise, who is the guarantee of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession to the praise of his glory. In other words, the gospel is message of truth. Verse 15. Therefore, I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all the saints, don't cease to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may what? Give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. In other words, that you may know him by revelation. That you may know the threefold revelation of Jesus Christ. That which comes to you, in you, and through you. Verse 18. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened. That you may know what is the hope of his calling. What are the riches of glory of his inheritance in the saints. And what is the exceeding greatness of his power toward us who believe or who follow according to the working of his mighty power, which he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at the right hand in the heavenly places, far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in that which is to come. And he put all things under his feet and gave him to be head over all things to the church, which he is the body, the fullness of him who fills all. In, all. in other words, the Holy Spirit of promise, he is the revealer. He reveals the Father and the Son of God, who is called Jesus. He brings forth the spirit of wisdom, which tells us what to do. And revelation. The Holy Spirit came to reveal Jesus the Christ 
to us, in us, and through us. Does everybody got this? He came to reveal Jesus Christ to us, in us, and through us. That's why he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. In other words, this, 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 this is a continuous cycle that starts to us. Amen? It starts to us, and it starts to us so that we may learn, hear, and see. So that we may what? Learn, hear, and see. In us, so that we may exchange our self-life for the life of Christ. So the exchange is within us. So he comes to us by revelation. In us by revelation. says that the witness is within us. So that we can begin to exchange our self-life for the life of Christ in us. And then through us with the manifestation of of the fruits of the Spirit, compassion, wisdom, power, and the love of Christ. I'm going to say that again. Through us, with the manifestation of the fruits of the Spirit, compassion, wisdom, power, and the love of Christ. So the way is to us, the truth is in us, and the life is through us. Has everybody got this? I'm going to say that again. So the way is to us, the truth is in us, and the life is through us. Because what Jesus said, I'm the way, truth, and life, if he's in you, then you are the carrier of the way, truth, and life. But revelation first must come to us. The way is to us. The revelation must be in us where there's an exchange of self-life for the life of Christ by truth. And then there's a revelation that is expressed through us which life is being released from us to someone else. And that's where the fruits, compassion, wisdom, power, and the love of God, love of Christ, is released from us. See, we don't realize that we are carriers of life, not death. That's why we're to, he says, eat of my flesh and drink of my blood. This is his flesh, the word. He who eats of my word has eternal life. Who drinks of my spirit has eternal life. Because your spirit needs to have revelation. Because it needs to be fed. It needs to be strong to overcome. Why? Because these are the things that you're able to, by truth, exchange truth for lie within you. The way comes to us. The truth is in us. And the life is through us. See, we are more than who you think you are. You cannot go by what you look in the mirror. You'll be discouraged every time. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> I can't believe this. <laughs> How could you live with this? <laughs> well, hallelujah. Thank God he doesn't judge by what you look like. <laughs> but to him, we're all just beautiful. He sees his own son. Proverbs 29. Threefold revelation. To us, in us, and through us. See, I shouldn't even be standing right now.
can't touch this. <laughs> da, 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 da. <laughs> See, you can tell the devil can't touch this. <laughs> can't touch this. Can't touch this. Then you can dance on his head. Da, da, da. Proverbs 29. Verse um, 18. Would you speak it with me? Where there's no what? Where there's no what? Where there's no what? Okay, revelation which comes to us, in us, and what? Through us. What happens when there's no revelation? People cast off restraints. What are the restraints? Of the flesh. Carnality. That's how you hold the reins, man. But happy is he who keeps the what? Law. These restraints. No revelation, no restraints of the flesh. No restraints of deception. No restraints of the evil nature. No restraints of the tongue. No restraints of the thoughts. Woo. Always reacting, not responding. See, when you find yourself reacting more instead of responding more, you know that the restraints are gone because there's lack of revelation coming to you, in you, and through you. And Luke chapter 2. The way is to us, the truth is in us, and the life is through us. I'm going to say that again. The way is what? To us. The truth is in us. And the life is through us. Luke 2. Whoa. Oh, that's 3. Verse 32, I think it is. Let's start at... 29. It says, what? Lord, now you are letting your servant depart in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared before the face of all peoples, a light to bring revelation to the Gentiles and the glory of your people Israel. In other words, He's saying, you, Jesus, he was holding the baby. He said, you've brought this revelation. A light to bring revelation to the Gentiles. See, you and I were once Gentiles, but now we're grafted in. We are now Christ. We are grafted into the promises of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And they come all the way down to me and you now. And the promises of Jesus with the new covenant. So we have many benefits. A light to bring revelation to us, in us, and through us. 2 Corinthians 4. Hallelujah. Verse 3. 2 Corinthians 4, verse 3. Is everybody there? Let's speak it. But even if our gospel, the message of truth, is what? Veiled. It is veiled to those who are perishing. Now, I want you to grab hold of this. In other words, the gospel of truth, the, the revelation that's supposed to be coming to us. So when there's not revelation coming to us, what's beginning to happen? We're beginning to what? Perish. 
In other words, if you have a plant and you don't water it, what's going to happen? Right. If you have a plant that needs sunlight and you may water it, but you keep it in the dark and never has sunlight, it drowns. And it's the same thing even with believers. The same thing. If revelation is not coming to us, then it's not being manifested in us or the exchange isn't being made and life isn't flowing through us. That's why people backslide. Because you know what? Rev, uh, the gospel of revelation may be coming to them, but they're rejecting it. Because for it to be in you, you must cooperate. You must make the exchange yourself. God doesn't force you to. He inspires you to. That's why we have the Holy Spirit of conviction sometimes. So that an exchange can be made. But God will not force you. So when revelation comes to us, and now it comes in us, we must make the exchange. If we're not willing to make the exchange, you know what happens? We begin to perish again. In other words, scales come back on. We begin to go backwards. The, the, the carnality begins to take over again, the old man. Is everybody all right? It is veiled to those who are perishing, whose minds the God of this age has blinded, who do not believe or follow, lest the light of the gospel, the glory of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine on them. Again, when revelation... Is, you know, revelation isn't coming to many people because they're rejecting it. And when it comes to a person, they reject it. Or if they accept it, but they refuse to make the exchange within them, it's rejecting, isn't it? Because, see, when, you don't, when you're not rejecting something, you're cooperating with it. If you're not cooperating with something, then you're rejecting it. And then life cannot flow through. Because it's not producing life. Is everybody all right? It's not what? Producing life. So what's it producing? Death. Hallelujah. The veil of those perishing, many believers are perishing for lack of truth to us, in us, and through us. Rejecting. What does the word say? It says um, about my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. And because you have rejected my knowledge, I will reject you from being priest. And because you have forgotten my ways, I will reject your children. Hosea 4, 6. Hello. Then that curse goes down the family line. Romans 2. Hallelujah. Threefold revelation. Romans chapter 2. Is everybody there? Starting at verse 1. Therefore, you are what? Inexcusable, O oh man. Whoever you are who judge, from whatever you judge another, you condemn yourself. For you judge, for you who judge, practice the what? Same thing. So he's not saying, it's not, look at somebody, oh, don't judge me. You bet you I'm going to judge you. I'm going to judge your fruit. I'm a fruit inspector. I don't like rotten fruit. I may love the tree, but I might hate the fruit. Hello? <laughs> so he says, look, at if, if you're one that's judging someone according to the same thing that you're practicing, <laughs> you're in judgment yourself from God. So that means something's going to be held back, isn't it? See, one of the way God judges his people is by holding back things. Or 
it got real quiet in here, so we'll go to the next verse. Verse 2. <laughs> but we know that the judgment of God is according to truth against those who practice such things. And do you think this, O oh man, you who judge those practicing such things and doing the same that you will escape the judgment of God? Or do you despise the riches of his goodness, forbearance, and long suffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leads you to what? Repentance. He's saying, man, repent. Repent from. You know, some, there's a lot of people who say they're believers. You know what? They haven't repented in years. I don't need to repent. They have no idea. Why? Because there is really no relationship. Well, I believe in God. I accepted Jesus 40 years ago. I haven't repented in the last 20. I didn't need to. I never did anything wrong, you jerk. <laughs> they have no idea because the scales are still there. Why? Because they're rejecting what? Revelation. Are they perishing? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, man. Is everybody okay? Verse 5. But in accordance with your hardness and your impedent heart, you are treasuring up for yourselves wrath in a day of wrath and revelation of the righteous judgment of God, who will render to each one according to his deeds. Eternal life to those who by patient continue. Everyone say continue. Patient means endure. In doing good. Seek for glory, honor, and immortality. But those who are what? Self-seeking, like selfish. And, all, and do not obey the truth. In other words, they reject revelation. But, but obey unrighteousness, indignation, and what? Wrath, tribulation, and anguish. And every soul of a man who does evil of the Jew first and also the Gentile. But glory, honor, and peace to everyone who works what is good to the Jew first and also to the Greek. For there is no partiality with God. So you may think that you're holier than thou. I can tell you what. God has no partiality. None. He loves us all the same. There is no difference. And his favor is to everyone. But for some, the favor is smaller than others because of what the enemy's stealing from them. Has everybody got it? The devil comes to what? Steal, kill, and destroy. Mm -hmm. Ephesians chapter 3. So they need to repent for rejecting the gospel of Revelation, don't they? The Bible says that God allows it to rain on the righteous and the evil. Of course, the servants of evil, some of them are being blessed, aren't they? Why? Because the devil's not stealing from them. Hello? He's promoting them to do his work. But for me and you that are walking right with God, brother, you and sister, you need to fight. Because the enemy doesn't want you to prosper because... You're armed and dangerous. He doesn't want you to get into a place where you can expand the kingdom. <laughs> Hello? So there's that place where you and I have got to get to where you can't touch this. Hallelujah. Ephesians 3 and verse 1. Let's speak it. For this reason I, Paul, the prisoner of Christ Jesus, for you Gentiles, if indeed you had heard of the dispensation of the grace of God, which was given to me for you, how that by what? Revelation. Revelation. He made known to me the mystery, as I have briefly written already, by which when you read, you may understand my knowledge in the mystery of, the, of Christ, which in other ages was not made known to the sons of men, as it has now been revealed by the spirit of his holy apostles and prophets, that the Gentiles should be fellow heirs of the same body and partakers 
of his promise in Christ through the gospel, of which I became a minister according to the gift of the grace of God given to me by the effective working of his power. By the effective working of his what? Power. In other words, we must allow the revelation to come. We must be looking for it. What does the word say? Remember we talked the other day about being sober and vigilant. In other words, you must be consistent to be alert. That's vigilant, right? So if you're not consistent, can you be alert? Amen? In Galatians 5. Galatians 5. In verse 22. So many times individuals are, they may, the revelation may come to them, come in them, but they're not willing to what? Cooperate and make the exchange. But when there is an exchange made, life is expressed, isn't it? And that's where the fruits and so forth are manifested. In Galatians chapter 5 and verse 22, it says, but what? The fruit of the Spirit is what? Is love. Is what? Love. See, in other words, the revelation comes to us, comes in us, and now going through us. If exchange hasn't been made, there won't be the manifestation of the fruits. But if there's exchange being made, there'll be the fruit of the Spirit is what? Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such there's no law. And those who are Christ have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Now look at this. Let us not become what? You won't be conceited. You won't be provoking. You won't be envying one another. Amen? You won't be criticism, criticizing. In other words, the fruit that's going to flow through us is not conceited, provoking, or envying one another, right? But exposing the enemy by its fruits. It's exposing the enemy's fruit, isn't it? Why? Because when, you're, when, when the revelation is being manifested to you, life is being expressed through you. That's also known as light. So when light is being expressed through you, through the fruits of the Spirit, through compassion, whatever it is, your enemy is being exposed because darkness is exposed, isn't it? So exposing the enemy by its fruits, not the person. We're not exposing the person. We're exposing the enemy. And in other words, and we're not, look at, when people try to expose a person, they use criticism, accusation, and ungodliness. They use anger. They use bitterness. All the things of the flesh. And that's all they're trying to do is expose the person but you're really not exposing the enemy. Because only light exposes the enemy. Jesus said, I am the way, I am the light of all man. When Jesus showed up, his enemies were exposed. They came up to him and tried to what? Cause him to stumble. If you're the son of God. Even the devil tried to do it by tempting him, didn't he? Oh, turn this 
a stone in the bread. See, Jesus was exposing his enemy everywhere he went. He didn't have to use criticism or accusation. And then when the enemy popped his head up, he cut it off. And he cut it off with truth. Not with emotion. Yeah, well, I just feel... Forget it. Your feelings don't mean poop. Truth is what means anything. Does everybody got it? It's truth. Practicing truth sets us free. So you may know the truth and still not be free. Because you're not allowing the truth to make the exchange. With the lie and the deception. See, people try to expose people instead of expose the enemy. Now you're walking in the love of Christ. Now you're expressing love. Now, you're, now, you're expre now Christ is being expressed through us and life is being expressed through us. We don't need to expose one another. We need to expose our enemy. Amen? Is everybody okay? Hallelujah. In Ephesians 4, That's what gossip does. What does it do? It exposes the person. It doesn't expose the enemy. It exposes the person. Gossip and slander. And Ephesians 4.11. Let's speak it together. And he himself gave some to be what? Apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers for the equipping of the saints, for the work of ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ till we all come to the unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God to a perfect man. To the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Why? So that we're constantly expressing life through us. The way comes to us, the truth is within us, and life is through us. And verse 14, very important. That we what? Should no longer be children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine or every thought or every emotion by trickery of men in the cunning craftiness of deceitful plotting, but speaking the truth what? In love. May what? Grow up. Everyone say, grow up. grow up. Turn to your neighbor and say, grow up. Grow up. Turn to the other one and say, grow up. Grow up. <laughs> Pull the mirror out and say, grow up. <laughs> but speaking the truth in love may grow up in all things into who? Him. Who is the head Christ from whom the whole body joined and knit together by what every joint supplies according to the effect of working by which every part does its share. Causes growth of the body for the edifying of itself in love. In love. No longer moved by ungodly thoughts, emotions, offenses, criticisms, but growing up in maturity. Let me share something with you. This may sound very strange to you, but mistakes is a part of maturing. Everyone say, my mistakes are his problem. It's a part of my maturing. Come on, let's say that again. My mistakes are his problems. It's a part of my maturing. Cool. Galatians 5, verse 13. Can we speak this together, please? For you what? Brethren, have been called to liberty or freedom... Only do not use liberty as an opportunity for the flesh. But through love serve one another. 
For you, brethren, have been called to liberty. Only do not use liberty as an opportunity for the flesh, but through love serve one another. But if you bite and devour one another, beware lest you become, become consumed. Consumed by one another. I say then walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Wow. In other words, don't misuse the liberty that Christ has given me and you. We don't want to oppress Christ. We want to express Christ. Amen. Let's go to 1 Peter chapter 1. verse 6. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 6. Everybody there? Let's speak it together. In this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while, if need be, you have been grieved by various trials, that the genuineness of your what? Faith, hello, God's checking you us out here. Being much more precious than gold that perishes, though it is tested by fire. Anybody feel like you're in the fire? May be found to the praise, honor, and glory at the revelation of Jesus Christ, whom having not seen, you love. Though now you do not see him, yet believing you rejoice with joy expressibly and full of glory. Receiving the end of your faith, the salvation of your souls. Of this salvation, the prophets have inquired and searched carefully who prophesied of the grace that would come to you. That would what? Come to. Revelation that would come to us. Searching what or what manner of time the Spirit of Christ who was in them was indicating when he testified beforehand the sufferings of Christ and the glories that would follow. Verse 12, to them it was revealed that not to themselves, but to us, they were ministering the things which now have been reported to you through those who have preached the gospel to you by the Holy Spirit sent from heaven, things which angels desire to look into. Therefore, what? Gird up the loins of your mind. Be sober and rest your hope fully upon the grace that is to be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. As obedient children, not conforming yourselves to the former loss as in your ignorance, but as he who called you is holy, you also be holy in all of your conduct. Because it is written, Be holy, for I am holy. And if you call on the Father who, without partiality, judges according to each one's work, Conduct yourselves throughout the time of your stay here in what? Fear and knowing that you are not redeemed with corruptible things like silver or gold from your aimless conduct received by traditions from your father, but with the precious blood of Christ as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. And I want to close at Psalm 1. Psalm 1. Threefold revelation. To us, in us, and through us. Verse 1. Blessed is the man who walks now in the counsel of the young godly. Now look at it. That comes to us. Everybody got it? So if you're walking in the counsel of the godly, it's amazing how many people get ungodly counsel. They, you know, from wherever. So blessed is a man who doesn't walk in the counsel of the godly, nor what? Stand in the what? Path of sinners. 
in us. So the ungodly counsel comes to us. The sin is in us. And we're standing in a path of sinners. In other words, they're associating with us. They're fellowshipping. Or even in the thoughts of sin. And the other one, nor sits in the seat of the what? Scornful. That's through a person. A person that's scornful that usually speaks things. Amen? So it comes to us, in us, and through us. He said, anyone that is blessed does not associate with that. In verse 2, he said, because his delight is in the law of the Lord or the word of the Lord. Remember, the law now represents the word. And in his word or in his law, he meditates day and night. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth its fruit in its seasons, whose leaf shall not wither, and whatever he does shall what? Prosper. Why? Because the devil can't steal it, can't touch it. Amen? But the ungodly are not so. But are like the chaff which the wind drives away, therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment nor the sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall what? Perish. Why are they perishing? Because they're rejecting revelation. Amen? The revelation that comes to us, in us, and then through us. Comes to us, in us, and through us. And when that is being manifested, open doors of prosperity come. Other than that, there's delay. There's always delay. Especially if you're one who says you believe. There's delay. Is everybody okay? Got it? Threefold revelation. Lord, we give you glory and honor and praise for your word. We thank you so much. We thank you. We thank you for your counsel, correction, and direction, and and that we may have eyes of understanding. To have discernment to acknowledge and not reject revelation that comes to us. And as we accept the revelation that comes to us, let it be an exchange within us. The exchange of the self-life for the Christ life. That your life can be expressed through us, not oppressed, but expressed. May the Lord bless each and every one, all of our watchers and listeners and everyone here today. Again, I encourage you to go to the total freedom, I mean, go to eternallibrary.org and learn and grow. And everyone say, grow for it. Grow for it. And, be and be blessed. Hallelujah. Now, I want to thank all the listeners and the viewers. And for more teachings and resources, please visit us at theeternallibrary.org. And may the Lord bless you and keep you and heal you and uplift you because you're a new creation in Christ. And old things have passed away and all things are made new in Christ Jesus.